Welcome everybody. We'll get started in just a moment. So we'll wait for a few more people to enter the room. All right, things are slowing down a little bit, so we will get started here. All right, hopefully you can see my screen. Welcome, my name is Ann Lutis. I am the Director of Mass Academy of Math and Science at Worcester Polytechnic Institute. This is our virtual information session. We are very happy you have joined us this evening and we are excited to tell you about our program. We have a lot of information to share, so we'll get right to it. We wish we could be together in person. If we were, this is where I would be standing, in the cold, <laughs> outside the entrance to our school, greeting you as you entered our building. Since we couldn't be in person though, we will, this will have to suffice for now. We are the Mass Academy of Math and Science at WPI. We are a small, public, tuition-free high school for academically advanced 11th and 12th grade Massachusetts students. We enroll approximately 50 11th grade students per year, which means we teach and support about 100 students in total between the two grades in any given year. 11th graders attend classes at Mass Academy learning from our dedicated faculty. 12th grade students attend all of their classes at WPI with WPI professors and WPI classmates, and they are treated as WPI students. All the while, they still receive regular and substantial support from Mass Academy throughout the year. Tonight, you will learn more about our school. You will hear about our curriculum, extracurricular offerings, and program requirements. You will also learn about the admissions process. After I've gone through those details, you will hear from our faculty and staff. You will also have a chance to hear directly from two students about their experience. And lastly, have your questions answered by faculty, parents, and students, mostly parents and students, during the final portion of our presentation. I am sure you have many questions. Please use the Q&A bubble at the bottom of your screen to submit any questions to us. We will either reply back with a typed response or save it for the question and answer portion at the end. I do, however, recommend you wait to submit your questions until you've had a chance to hear a little bit more from us. It is likely that some of your questions will be addressed directly during our presentation, and this will help ensure we can get to all of your questions at the end of the presentation. If you have questions after tonight is over, we welcome you to email us at the address on your screen. So who are we? I'm Ann Lutis, the Director of Mass Academy. I joined the school in July and have been absolutely amazed at the quality of the curriculum and instruction, the college and career counseling and support, and the opportunities available to the students. The students themselves are incredible. They all come to Mass Academy with their own unique skills, interests, talents, perspectives, and that makes this community a joy to be a part of. The students' achievements while at Mass Academy are equally impressive. Feel free to ask them about their personal accomplishments and interests during the Q&A. Tonight, you will hear from many voices in our program. Specifically, we have with us our school counselor, Lisa Post. We have our support staff, uh, I'm sorry, we have a, a wellness counselor from WPI. Her name's Anna Bain, um, but she is not here tonight. Um, she's got a, a prior commitment. But Ms. Bain provides direct instruction to our juniors and serves as a consultant to the school. She's not able to be here, as I said, but I will talk with you later um, about her program. You will meet Ms. Julie Therio, our operations manager, as well as our full faculty. We have Dr. Kevin Crothers. He teaches STEM with science and technical writing. Bill Ellis is our physics teacher. Tom Ragley teaches math modeling. Kristen Small is our humanities teacher. Angela Tarico teaches computer science. And Julia Wildfong teaches both French and Spanish. Now I'd like to show you a short video uh, with Mass Academy alumni. You will hear directly from them about their experience at our school. It's about three and a half minutes.
Mass Academy completely changed the trajectory of my education. It challenged me in ways that I wouldn't have been otherwise. I engineered a device to go inside an EpiPen that automatically calls 911 when the EpiPen is administered. And I have a patent, and not many high school graduates can say that they have that. Being a student at Mass Academy challenged me a lot and pushed me to my limits. It made me realize I could do things I didn't know I was capable of before. Studying abroad in France for two semesters, spending a summer out in Glacier National Park, it really opened my eyes to see that anything is possible. One of the biggest skills I acquired from Mass Academy was uh, confidence. I learned how to read high-level articles, I learned how to make my own conclusions off them, and really think critically about everything that's out there. The communication skills really helped me get into Brown and also helped me a lot during my first year of college. Mass Academy was a great decision. I was able to really do things that I was interested in instead of just following a standard curriculum. Because of Mass Academy, I became a scientist that can do more than just science. I worked in the Senate this past summer and I was introduced to legislation, policy, things that I had never really seen before. I really want to make sure that I can translate whatever scientific things that I do in the future to actually having an impact. Mass Academy really just changed the way I thought about what I could do with my life. This past summer and past year at UConn, I worked on creating a proposal for cervical cancer research in India uh, where I wanted to help more rural women access cervical cancer screening. And that whole process was something that was already familiar to me because of my time at Mass Academy. And I think that's what really allowed me to conduct my research and actually go through with all the things that I wanted to. The teachers at Mass Academy are really the first people that sat me down and said, you want to do this thing, you want to get a PhD, you want to do research, you can do it. It's possible. We'll help you. Doing the STEM project, going to the science fair at MIT, having all of the classes with WPI really helped me prepare for UC Berkeley and really allowed me to confidently say in my UC Berkeley essays, I want to do this and I want a PhD in this field and I want to do this research. Since middle school, I've been really into science fairs and research and Mass Academy helped me bring that passion to like an international stage. Through Mass Academy, I got to travel to places as close as DC as far as India to present research, meet with other students and accelerate my path towards higher colleges. Coming to Harvard, I think the, probably the biggest skill that helped me was being able to be an independent learner, and that kind of a skill really makes me a more self-motivated student in college. Mass Academy really fostered an independence in me that led me to be able to do the things that I'm doing now. I am a stronger leader, a better public speaker. I am more interested in collaborating than competing with others. I have more passion for what I'm doing, and I long to make a difference in the world. Mass Academy gave me a lot more ambition, it gave me confidence, it made me set higher goals. Ultimately, it changed my life. I think that says so much about Mass Academy. Our students accomplish so much while they're here and continue to achieve great things after they move on. Every time I watch this video, I'm inspired by the words of our alumni. They shared how Mass Academy challenged them and gave them confidence, helped them believe that they could do things that they never had envisioned or imagined that, that were possible for them. During their time at the school, they, imp they improved their research skills, their communication and leadership skills, and they really made an impact. Students at Mass Academy are given opportunities to explore who they are and what interests them and they can dive deeply into those areas of passion and build their confidence as they prepare for their future. You also heard a bit about the culture at Mass Academy in there. We will speak more about this throughout the night, but as one alumnus stated the emphasis, she was interested in collaborating over competing. That is at the core of our program. Just like all public high schools, Mass Academy receives its accreditation from the New England Association of Schools and Colleges. Part of that process is to articulate a vision of the graduate. These are the attributes we want all students to possess upon graduation. Mass Academy's vision of the graduate contains four attributes. We want all graduates to be forward thinking. We want them to see problems as opportunities, not as barriers or obstacles. We want them to see challenges as a chance to learn and to grow. We want our graduates to be innovative. 
out of the box thinkers. We want them to, to be creative and look for new ideas, seeking to attempt things in different ways. We want them to be inquisitive. We want them to be curious, to ask questions and to wonder. We offered a creative engineering and design class after school during B term in which students learned to program Arduinos. But the course started with several sessions of taking things apart and discovering how things worked. Students took about, apart phones and keyboards and calculators and window fans and printers. And that curiosity leads to learning, much deeper learning. Our graduates are confident, but not boastful. They embrace challenges, they take academic risks, they stretch themselves and are comfortable being uncomfortable. They recognize that not knowing everything is not a weakness and they don't shy away from something unfamiliar, but rather seek to learn more. And they ask for help when they need it. Students enter Mass Academy with some or maybe even all of these attributes, which is great. But in the time that they're with us, we want them to strengthen these traits and really become aware of themselves in these areas. So what do we offer? We have small class sizes of approximately 15 to 18 students. Our teachers recognize that students come from all over the Commonwealth and have varied backgrounds uh, academically because of the programs and opportunities at their sending schools. Therefore, teachers are careful about how they deliver instruction. They differentiate the content to provide appropriate levels of challenge, regardless of a student's background. This is evident in all classrooms, but most notably in physics, math modeling, computer science, and languages, where students' prior coursework can be vastly different. You've heard me reference collaboration already, but this really is at the core of our culture. If you were to ask any former or current member of the Mass Academy community to describe the environment, more often than not, the first word they will say is collaborative. The alumnus in the video said collaborating over competing. I've also heard WPI and Mass Academy students described as competing with problems, not with each other. And it's true. Students at Mass Academy recognize that they are more successful when they work together and lean on each other when they need it. We believe in project-based authentic learning experiences. This happens in all classrooms and extends into individual and team research projects. Our students get to dive into real problems, some of which they have selected for themselves like their research project. And sometimes they are addressing problems with a real client with an identified need. Students design in CAD and use 3D printers. They build prototypes and design their own websites. And they write, star in, and produce their own skits and films. Students immerse themselves in the WPI campus during their senior year, enrolling in a full course load at WPI and availing themselves of the library, labs, and campus center as they would if, as they, would if they were a full-time WPI student. And I can't speak enough about what a close-knit, supportive, and kind community we have at Mass Academy. Being new to the school myself, I can attest to how welcoming this environment is and how everyone really truly looks out for each other. I'll give you an example. We take our students on an overnight retreat at the start of the school year. Some of the time on this retreat is dedicated to working on their independent STEM projects, including preparing an elevator pitch. On the last morning of the retreat, our entire group stood in a large circle, all 50 students plus the faculty, and one by one students walked to the center of the circle to deliver their elevator pitch. Not only did students applaud each other after their pitches, they clapped and cheered students on as they walked toward the center of the circle to deliver their pitch, helping to build that much needed confidence. And this is just a small example of how everyone celebrates and supports each other. As a student, here's what you can expect. You will have many opportunities to speak in front of a group. It will be an expectation. The elevator pitch was one such example. But this is also happening regularly during class as you explain a problem or present your work, and it will be through science and engineering fair presentations, and it will happen constantly during language and humanities classes. You will be engaged in authentic application of your learning. I spoke about this before. You'll conduct your own research. You will work as a, uh, as a team to design and develop an assistive technology device, and you will design and build your own website. Um, you'll create an app as part of a team, and you'll write and write and write. 
and you'll have the opportunity to participate in truly unique extracurriculars. Mass Academy students are eligible to participate in the WPI Music Program and FIRST Robotics Team 190. We have many students participate in math competitions and Cyber Patriot, and we offer specialized extracurriculars like disc golf, photography, slam poetry, and Tai Chi. We also offer some classes after school, including CAD and the Arduino's course I mentioned earlier called Creative Engineering and Design. We have a substantial community service requirement. All students complete at least 50 hours of community service per year, and many of our students exceed that number. Students who are interested may participate in athletics at their sending schools with permission from their school's principal. And of course, we prepare students to be successful in their coursework at WPI during their senior year. This year's senior class has a GPA that well exceeds 3.9 out of a 4.0 scale for A and B terms combined. The junior year academic program is the same for everyone with differentiation within the courses as I described earlier in the presentation. Juniors take computer science, humanities, math modeling, physics, STEM with science and technical writing, either French or Spanish, and physical education. I will take a moment now to speak briefly about physical education since you won't hear about that from uh, any of the teachers. We offer a different focus for each term. We include programs like self-defense, yoga, traditional phys ed, and mindfulness. Anna Bain, our WPI wellness counselor, she teaches a RIO mindfulness program to our students, and RIO stands for Recognition, Insight, and Openness. The full course is about four and a half hours spread out over usually three sessions, uh, and that time is really dedicated to helping students understand how to um, really be mindful about all aspects of their life, and we find that this transfers very well into just navigating being a junior and then a senior at WPI, or a senior taking classes at WPI. Senior year though is very different. Seniors take their courses at WPI, WPI with a large number of offerings to choose from. WPI doesn't follow the traditional semester model. This is really important to, to understand. At WPI, courses are broken down into four intensive seven week terms. In each term, students will take three courses, one humanities, one math, and one science, engineering, or computer science class. Of the humanities courses, students are required to take two writing or English lit courses, and students who have not yet taken US history can do that as another humanities course to meet the graduation requirement. This means that over the course of the year, students will take 12 courses at WPI. Seniors are also required to complete two terms of physical education. This can be done through successful completion of WPI phys ed classes or through pre-approved activities like participating in sports at your sending school or other regular supervised and structured lessons. In addition to the WPI course requirements, all seniors must complete an independent study project of their choosing. It's a 100 hour project. It can be in uh, an area of research, community service, or learning something new. Some examples, uh, learning a new language, writing a children's book, wood carving, uh, learning how to cook, and writing a cookbook. All juniors conduct an independent research project as part of our core curriculum. Students have several opportunities to present their research projects to the community. These presentations begin in December where students complete their first formal presentations and receive feedback from peers, faculty, and alumni. Students present again in February, this time to a larger audience, which includes parents as well. And this fair serves as our qualifier for the Worcester Regional Science and Engineering Fair. We then send a cohort of students to participate in WORSEF with selected students advancing to the Mass State Science and Engineering Fair and possibly the International Science and Engineering Fair. Some of our students have also been invite, invited to join the American Junior Academy of Science and present at their annual meeting. You are welcome to ask all of our students about their projects during the Q&A. We believe it is important to give back to the community. We do this in several different ways. One way is through partnerships with local schools and community organizations. These photos here were taken in October when more than 20 of our students delivered STEM lessons to fourth, fifth, 
sixth and seventh grade students at a local school. Because of our students' participation and their dedication and commitment and hard work, we were able to deliver these lessons to every classroom in that school as part of STEM week this past fall. Other examples of partnerships include a student-led tutoring program called Rising Stars Initiative that provides virtual tutoring sessions to students at local middle school. We also have a student-led service group called MAX that has partnered with the Worcester Refugee Assistance Project. And Dr. Crothers is actively involved with Elder Services of Worcester Area, Easter Seals, and Seven Hills Foundation to provide targeted support for their clients. One such example is called Tech Connect, in which Dr. Crothers coordinates with Mass Academy students to deliver one-on-one -on -one or small group technology and device trainings to elderly members of the community. Besides these larger coordinated efforts, Mass Academy students volunteer in their community. This goes back to the 50 hours per year community service requirement I mentioned earlier. They tutor at libraries, work for Habitat for Humanity, volunteer at food pantries and community gardens. The, the list goes on and on. I briefly mentioned WPI's FIRST Robotics Team 190. Our students participate as part of the team sponsored by WPI. Students have access to the robotic shop and facilities after school nights and on weekends. They get to collaborate with other students and college mentors. They learn machining and programming. You don't need prior experience to join the team. You just need to show up. Here's a photograph from August when Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito came to WPI to announce STEM Week for 2021. Team 190 showcased their robot and answered questions from the Lieutenant Governor. Pictured here, the Lieutenant Governor is on the left. We have some Team 190 members in the middle and WPI President Lori Leshen is on the right. I also briefly mentioned our retreat earlier. At the beginning of the year, we take our students to Plymouth, Massachusetts for a three-day overnight retreat. Students work on their STEM projects and spend a significant amount of time bonding with each other. They engage in team building activities, nature hikes, water sports, karaoke, we even have a campfire, and they present these wonderful, amazing skits inspired by their summer reading. That is for sure one of the highlights of the retreat. The entire faculty is part of this retreat as well, and it's an incredible opportunity for us to bond together. The students are with us for such a short period of time coming from all over the Commonwealth. So this retreat really helps us to get to know them and get them to bond as a community very quickly. As you consider applying to Mass Academy, it's important to note that our academic year does not mirror a traditional public high school. Our students begin in mid-August and finish in late May. We do not have the traditional February and April vacations but rather we align more closely with the WPI calendar with breaks in October and March between those terms. The holidays follow the WPI academic calendar. This means we have school on Columbus or Indigenous Peoples Day, on Veterans Day, and on President's Day. The school day for, for juniors runs 7.40 a.m. to 2.45 p.m. We offer extracurriculars most days after school and the building is open until 4.30. Students who need to be picked up after 4.30 head up to campus and use the library or campus center. Seniors follow a schedule that aligns with their WPI courses, which varies from term to term. We do have a check-in and check-out protocol for both juniors and seniors. And while the seniors spend most of their time on the WPI campus, they come to Mass Academy to check in and out every day. This gives us a chance to connect with them and provide support or resources. Seniors also meet with a faculty advisor every week to discuss academic progress, community service and independent study work and their college applications. I would be remiss if I didn't mention that niche.com has rated us the number one public high school in Massachusetts for the fifth year in a row. We are also rated the number three public high school in the US and we have the number one best public high school teachers in the country. So what do you think? How does Mass Academy sound to you? Is it what you're looking for? As you think about this, be sure to consider whether our academic program matches your interests, your needs, if you're ready and able to commit to this type of model. It really does require a commitment on the part of the student and the family. Are you prepared to be challenged in a way that you never have before with very high expectations and a lot of individual attention and accountability? 
Do you seek project-based learning opportunities? Are you interested in conducting your own research, seeking advanced coursework? If so, we encourage you to continue to our, explore our website to learn even more. Our application portal is open. It opened on January 1st. The application deadline is March 4th. The application includes several recommendations, three teacher recommendations and one counselor, two essays and an optional video. There is no entrance exam and standardized test scores are optional. We do have a residency requirement. It is the policy of the Mass Academy to consider for admission only students who have established permanent legal residency in Massachusetts prior to the application deadline. More information, including the full policy, acceptable documents, and instructions for securely submitting them are included in the application. Decisions are made in early May, and we will hold a mandatory new student orientation in late May. If you haven't started an application yet, you can go to our website under the admissions tab to begin. On that same admissions tab, you can also find information about our virtual visits that are coming up in February. These visits are for prospective students. They're not geared toward parents and they are run by our current students. The dates for these visits can be found on our website. Space is limited, so we ask that you only sign up for one visit. You have most certainly heard enough from me. So now let me introduce the rest of the team, starting with our operations manager, Ms. Julie Terrio. Hello, everybody. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, my name is Julie. I am the operations manager at the Academy. I um, take care of the day-to-day -day, um, operations and attendance. I'm the first person that your child would um, be greeted by in the morning. Um, I can answer questions beyond this presentation. If you call the, um, the school, I will be answering your questions. Um, I take care of um, forms, transcripts, records, um, like I said, attendance, uh, straight state reporting, uh, that sort of thing. Um, and that's it. That's it for me. Quick, quick, quick. Um, I would love to introduce you to our school counselor, um, Miss Post, um, who will present. Thank you. Good evening. Hi, everyone. My name is Lisa Post, and I'm the school counselor here at Mass Academy. I work with students individually on the college search and college application process. I provide support in academic and personal counseling, and I work with students and faculty to create and provide wellness programs. I coordinate all standardized testing and manage the alumni base. Uh, database. Um, after this presentation, if you have specific questions, I'm happy to answer them via email. You can find my email on the Mass Academy website. I appreciate all of you joining us this evening, and I look forward to reading many of your applications uh, in a few weeks. And I would now like to introduce our computer science teacher, Angela Tarico. Thank you, Lisa. Hi, um, thank you for spending your evening with us today and learning more about our school program. So I'm Angela Trico, I teach computer science. And I'd just like to take a few minutes um, to talk with you about the computer science course. I like to look at the course as being broken up into three parts. We start with the um, web design tech, uh, web des learning web design techniques and implementation using HTML and CSS. Um, as Ms. Ludis mentioned, so students are responsible for developing and maintaining their own personal and professional electronic portfolio in the form of a website. And I encourage all of you to go to our the Mass Academy page and um, you will find under about students and you can see all of the students websites that they um, made and designed uh, for the CS course. They're all posted there and they're very, very helpful to learn more about our student body and some of the amazing work that they're doing. Um, the course then gets into the fundamental 
ideas of object-oriented methodologies uh, through the widely used Java programming language. So topics will include like data types and structures, decisions, iteration, recursion, iteration and, re and recursion. Uh, we get into designing and implementing classic classes. We look at graphics, uh, different algorithms and using standard file input output. The topics are strongly aligned to the computer science A curriculum. And so students can take the test in May if they choose to, but it isn't a requirement. Um, the third part of the course is where students work together in teams to find important issues in their communities and they learn how to build a mobile application to solve them. And in this project, students go through all key aspects of new product development. So they're looking at idea generation, they're doing market research, they're investigating data, technical feasibility, um, and then it gets into software uh, product design and development test. And then they present all of their work uh, during our, our apps fair that we have um, in May. So in that project, you know, students are looking at how to, how to analyze software programs. We do a lot of test and validation and they go through a full software engineering lifecycle model. Um, I generally offer two electives throughout the year. So Cyber Patriot is one of them, which is a national cybersecurity competition. And the second is programming team uh, where we usually focus on problem solving through coding and competition level programming. Um, and that's usually offered. Cyber Patriot runs on a slightly different schedule um, because most of the competitions do occur on, on weekend days. Um, so thank you very much. I would love to introduce our French and Spanish teacher, um, Mrs. Julia Wildfong. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, I'm Julia Wildfong. I teach French and, uh, French and Spanish, but it's also French and Spanish immersion. Um, and that's a really important component of the of the program is that there is no English from the time the students get in there until the end of the year, there, there's absolutely no English, um, which actually helps them progress uh, quite a bit. The students are broken up into two groups based on a diagnostic test. Um, those who score lower or have had less experience are in the intermediate class, um, and those who have more experience and score higher are usually in the advanced class, but they both are immersion with different materials. Um, I like to use what I call a natural language acquisition approach, which means there's not a textbook where you're going through units. Um, just like when you learn your first language, you're or having input from all sorts of places, from TV, from your parents, from your friends, from uh, books, uh, from music. And that's how the class works, is that there's all kinds of authentic materials that the students can work with, um, get into groups, do project-based learning, uh, play games like Monopoly and Clue, do scavenger hunts. Um, right now they are working on a film project where they are storyboarding and editing and filming uh, short films uh, for our annual film festival at the end of the year. Um, and each student, because um, each student comes from a very different place. I, each student is measured um, by his or her or their progress. Um, I start a video in the beginning of the year and sort of see a baseline of where they are. And then at the end of the year, I do an, another video. And uh, much of their grade is really based on how much they have progressed and not really against um, anybody else in the class. So there's, there's not any competition there and it is very collaborative. Um, if you have any other questions, you can feel free to put them on here or email me. And I would like to now introduce uh, the math modeling teacher, uh, Tom Rigby. Hey, good evening, uh, everybody. Hey, thanks for attending the info session. I am Tom Rigby, the math teacher at the Academy. Um, I'll describe the junior math course uh, first. It's uh, centered around problem solving. It's uh, collaboration support. And thinking differently, um, we have many, uh, you know, uh, students coming from different towns and, and cities. And, um, you know, what I hope to do is, is to help each student progress, uh, you know, in their math appreciation at their at their own pace. Uh, we achieve the appreciation by working through a variety of topics in math. We explore uh, topics such as math modeling and problem solving 
And we worked through uh, some traditional high school topics and uh, study other topics such as number theory and some discrete math. So for me, I, I look at it at math, uh, modeling itself takes on multiple meanings of mathematics. Uh, math modeling itself involves taking real world problems uh, into the math world. Uh, the students work together in teams to try and understand the problem, uh, determine its limitations and restrictions, and then develop a strategy to find uh, what is uh, considered a best solution. Uh, the teams must come up with an evaluation process to determine the feasibility of their model. And much like the scientific process, the modeling process involves multiple iterations uh, to hopefully develop um, better solutions. Um, modeling in math can also refer to demonstrations of uh, problem solving strategies, uh, the attitude mindset each person brings to the classroom and how people approach each day. Uh, we share our experiences, uh, the successes and the failures in our, in our classroom, um, you know, hopefully each day. So I strive for a student-centered collaborative experience for all. Uh, and that's uh, junior year and senior year. You know, um, every student takes uh, four math courses at WPI. I work with each student on mapping a set of classes that will make sense for them. Uh, the most common sequence being the calculus one to four. Uh, but based on uh, background and future plan, uh, background and future plans, some students may decide to take a different sequence of classes. I'd encourage you, uh, like Mr. Rico said, I'd encourage you to take a look at the student websites found on the Mass Academy page. It'll give you a good feel for all of our classes as, as well as the, the uh, student experience. Uh, thanks again for attending uh, the, this uh, info session. And I'd like to turn the presentation over to our wonderful and inspiring physics teacher, uh, Mr. Bill Ellis. Thanks. Hey, hello everyone. Uh, thank you for coming tonight. I am the physics teacher um, and all Mass Academy juniors take physics, um, even if they've had prior physics and also if they've not had prior physics. Um, the students come from a lot of different schools and a lot of different schools do science sequencing in different ways. Um, but the majority of the students have not had physics, so it is the one that we focus on and that we can support. Um, so students learn a collaborative, high-challenge environment, and then um, under low risk, most of the days and most of the weeks are focused on effort um, and just trying to do the work as we prepare, learn topics, and prepare for the assessments. Um, so a lot of that time is just working on effort. Um, we can address that the students are coming from different backgrounds, both in sciences and in math, using differentiated assignments. Uh, projects and labs. Um, so the students can choose a variety of the algebra or calculus based tasks. Um, so no prior physics is needed. A majority of the students have no prior physics. Recent years we have about 80%. Um, and also you need no prior calculus and you can still do some of the calculus based physics problems. You know, most of our students have no prior calculus. Um, so that's usually one of the biggest concerns people have coming in is like, this is a challenging physics course and I feel like I have no prior physics or calculus. Can I succeed in it? And the answer is yes. Um, and so much like the computer science course, the curriculum is very much aligned with AP Physics 1 and AP Physics C exams. You are not required to take them, um, but you certainly um, are prepared well if you want to take them. Um, so uh, I wanna address one of the questions that was also aired so in the Q&A, just partially now because we'll have the time for the Q&A later on, um, but it's about uh, biology and chemistry courses and if they are offered or if there's any focus on them at the academy. Um, I do value them. Uh, but we do have to cater to what the students most have not had in, in the topics. Um, for junior year, you can certainly work on your STEM project in those fields. And senior year, you can also take more biology and chemistry courses. And now I'd like to pass it on to, I believe it was Mrs. Small for our humanities class. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Kristen Small, and I teach humanities at Mass Academy. Our humanities course is a blend of literature, history, psychology, sociology, a little bit of music, um, and a little bit of art. And we strive to answer the question, what does it mean to be human? So in order to do that, we sample from a wide variety of literary, historical texts, as well as look at some neuroscience, some psychology, um, and students do a lot of self-examination over the year. They do an, an awful lot of writing, whether it be journaling about their personal experiences, writing analytical essays, or even creating their own essay prompts, which we are currently working on. I would say that the course focuses heavily on communication skills, whether those be 
um, verbal communication skills, written communication skills. So students have a lot of opportunities to edit their work, edit the work of their peers, um, and really get to a comfortable place with their writing and their speaking. You can feel free to contact me with any questions that you have. Um, and at this time, I'm gonna hand it over to Dr. Kevin Crothers, our STEM teacher. Welcome. Thank you very much for attending tonight's session. My name is Kevin Crothers, and I am the STEM teacher here at Mass Academy. And I see STEM as a uh, separated really by two independent areas. Uh, the first half of the, uh, the year, we typically undertake the independent research project where students choose an area of uh, their passion about, or whether they're passionate about science, engineering, or mathematics. And they dive deep into that area and discover uh, areas or knowledge gaps that uh, are in the field. And so they decide what they're going to be doing their independent research project on. And so it's completely self-directed. And I help students go from uh, researching, brainstorming, the uh, and question development all the way through the communication process, which is uh, part of this uh, doing science, doing engineering. And so the independent research projects at Mass Academy end up starting out with our school STEM fair. So we prepare students uh, to move into our STEM fair so they can communicate their work and get effective feedback from our community members. They can go on to the regional STEM fair and all the way up to ICEF, uh, International Science and Engineering Fair. We've had several students each year go on to ICEF and present their work. Uh, and I also wanted to reiterate that for independent research projects, there is really no prior experience required. Uh, a majority of our students have not undertaken a STEM projects at their sending school, and we help, I help students through this whole process. The second part of the year, uh, students in STEM with advanced uh, with science and technical writing end up doing a assistive technology group project. Uh, and we're beginning to uh, move into that phase right now where we end up collaborating with Seven Hills, uh, Easter Seals, or Elder Services of the Worcester area to identify a, a need in the community from their clients and their customers and to help and develop and design a solution to for that need. Uh, so we get to work with clients in the field. We uh, collaborate with them to address some of the issues that they have. Uh, and so we end up uh, presenting that work at our STEM fair in May. Uh, so we, end, we prepare students to start this STEM process by de designing and developing uh, the initial focus and the question. We begin, we continue diving deep by writing a literature review and reading scientific and primary journal articles. Uh, and so students get an opportunity and experience of reading those technical articles uh, and can critically analyze those articles as well. They also end up uh, designing the testing strategy and the experimental process uh, and planning out and, and completing that testing strategy. And if they're doing an engineering process, engineering project, or even a science-based project, they go through iterations and repeat those tests. We practice data analysis and uh, move through this iterative process so that we can end up communicating this information to our community at large. Uh, and so all of our students end up being able to present either through a uh, poster presentation or a verbal presentation, uh, and also through writing, they can communicate that information uh, throughout this whole year. Uh, so right now, our students are furiously getting ready for our STEM fair, which is in a couple of weeks. Uh, and uh, if you're interested, please contact me. Uh, there will be an open session at about four o'clock uh, on February 10th for uh, public to end up looking at uh, the posters and the work this year. But if you'd like 
to look at some of the posters from last year, please go to our website, look under our students' websites from last year, and you can see all of their projects. So thank you very much for attending. Uh, I look forward to hearing any questions uh, in the future. Please don't hesitate to email me with those questions. So I'm going to hand it off to Ms. Lutis. Thank you so much, Dr. C. All right, in a few moments, you will be meeting uh, a whole bunch of students and parents, as you can see from this list. But before we get started, uh, I do have a couple of students that I've asked to share a few words with all of you. So Saya and John, I'm going to stop sharing my screen so we can all see you. And if you would please turn on your cameras. All right, and Saya, why don't you go first? Hi everyone, um, my name is Saya Daga and I am currently a junior at Mass Academy. First of all, I just wanted to say thank you so much for taking the time to be here tonight. Um, clearly, by being here, you are all students who are focused on your education and are looking to push yourselves academically. And I truly cannot think of a better place to do that than here at Mass Academy. During these past few months, I have tried so many new things and learned an incredible amount in such a short span of time. As I was brainstorming what I was going to say to you tonight, I was thinking about all the work we have completed this year, and I truly was in awe of everything that we have done. From participating in a three-day long math competition to writing STEM literature reviews and solving complex physics problems, Mass Academy really has shown me my potential and given me the opportunity to push myself in ways I never would have otherwise. You'll hear a lot about academics tonight, so I just wanted to take a moment um, to talk a, a little bit about a different aspect of Mass Academy, and Ms. Lutis mentioned it before, but that is the community that we form here. I know that when I first came to Mass Academy, I was really nervous about meeting so many new people. I was scared that in such an academically heavy environment, I wouldn't be able to make new friends or that people wouldn't be, wouldn't be interested in getting to know one another. And I am so happy to say that I was completely wrong. I truly have made some of my best friends here at Mass Academy, and I have never experienced such a supportive academic environment, such a supportive environment in any of my previous academic endeavors. And by supportive, I don't just mean academically supportive, though that is true as well. I also mean emotionally supportive. Our junior class has 50 students, and I think I speak for all of us when I say we are all 100% supporting each other. Being placed in such an academically strenuous school might seem like it would foster an environment of competition, but our teachers here at Mass Academy do an amazing job of encouraging collaboration. Most days I learn just as much, if not more, from my classmates as I do from my teachers. And every student here at Mass Academy is always willing to help um, each other out. And I personally think that that is what makes Mass Academy such a wonderful school. I'll just end by saying, I am so glad that I chose to come to Mass Academy. And if this school seems like the right fit for you, I hope you'll be applying. Thank you so much for listening. I'm gonna pass it over to John. Thanks so much for that awesome lead, Saya. And I just wanna say, I totally agree with everything Saya said so far. Um, everyone, I'm John Chili. I'm a senior here at Mass Academy. Um, as you've gotten the impression so far from what Saya said and what uh, Ms. Lutis and all the teachers have said so far, Mass Academy is a challenging school up front, but as has been iterated so many times before, the difficulty primarily lies in the workload, the amount of effort you put in, and your will to collaborate with others. Speaking from my experience as a junior last year, the right answer to a problem or an enigma isn't immediately apparent, like in all of our classes, um, either because the instructor won't directly tell you or because there are multiple good ways to approach a problem. Mr. Ragu's math class, for example, yeah, it's, it's a great, great example that um, it's it's unlike any other math class you've probably ever taken. You'd be hard pressed to get Mr. Regley to tell you exactly how to do a problem. For that, you'll have to rely on collaborative problem solving. A lot of group learning is involved right there. Now, when I came to Mass Academy, I didn't have an exceptional understanding of general math concepts. I came from a vocational school and I specialize in information technology. Well, I'm so grateful that my sending school gave me the opportunity to be certified as an entry-level computer technician. 
um, the format of learning at my sending school meant that I had about half as much time uh, dedicated to academic work as other regular high schools in Massachusetts. Um, for reference, the only math I knew beyond Algebra 2 and Geometry uh, was basic uh, linear algebra fundamentals um, that I only learned so I could complete, compete in Wacomole, which is a local math competition, some of you might have heard of. The same wasn't true of all of my peers, whether it was through external math programs, online resources, or AP classes at their sending schools. Some of my peers had already developed a strong sense of approaching various math problems. This was, and I emphasize this very greatly, by no means a hindrance to my motivation to succeed. Uh, regardless of your knowledge in math, or for that matter, any field, Mass Academy is an environment in which your peers' successes are your successes too. This phenomenon might be a result of the following three important aspects of Mass Academy, it's small class size, numerous group projects, um, everyone talked about Dr. C and Mr. Rico, um, and the lack of class ranking. I cannot begin to tell you how relieved I am that my curiosity in math and my motivation to succeed in school was not sequestered by a number in a ranking system. You know, of the many stresses I had to endure over pandemic year filled with several responsibilities across my math, humanities, STEM, and CS projects, not once did I stop to measure myself up against my peers, nor did I take pride in the breadth of my knowledge that some of my peers didn't have. A lot of collaboration, very little competition, as I mentioned. Now, I've talked a lot about junior year. Uh, senior year, as I am currently a senior, has been a lot different than junior year. While it's true that I do have less coursework with just three classes per term, the short seven-week schedules per term require a lot of tension um, on a day-to-day -day basis. What I love about senior year is that I've had the opportunity to choose which classes I want to take, just as any college student would. At WPI, three primary types of courses include lectures, discussions, and labs, and lectures, professors, many of whom have masters and doctorates in their respective fields, present information classes as small as 20 students and as big as uh, 100 or even over 100. As opposed to lectures, discussions are hosted by WPI student teaching assistant who reviews material that the professors teach. And in labs, we get to apply our knowledge more practically. It is good to note that not every class in my senior has had discussions in labs. In addition to all the strict WPI coursework I've been doing, I've also had a few other responsibilities to keep up with, namely being an active member of the FRC 190 robotics team, which juniors can participate in as well. Um, I've also had to work on my not tying senior independent study project. Uh, all seniors have to complete 100 hours of senior independent study project, as you heard earlier in this presentation, and mine is about not tying. You can see I'm currently wearing an Eldridge knot, which is um, one of the products yielded by my work and my project so far. Another responsibility I have this year is that I have to meet up with my senior advisor about once a week, and that's just to make sure that I'm keeping up with all my classes and being as successful as I can be. Overall, I don't think I've encountered a challenge in my senior year so far that my awesome junior mass academy faculty haven't prepared me for. I just want to end on the following message. I get the impression that students in many other high schools are motivated to succeed by the prospect of beating out another classmate in class rank. At Mass Academy, you're literally incapable of such exterior motivation. Intrinsic motivation is where it's at. If you're someone who only wants to learn because you want to achieve high grades, I can almost guarantee that you're going to have a difficult time finding something to be passionate about in your STEM 1 project, which is an amazing experience if there's something that you just want to follow. Um, if you think that you have a strong academic passion or a set of strong academic passions, and you have the courage, the will to pursue those passions, I encourage you to apply at Mass Academy. Thank you. Thank you so much, Saya and John. Those, your words were just wonderful. I really appreciate all of them. At this point, I invite all of our students and parents to turn on their cameras and join us as we enter the question and answer portion of the evening. Look at all these wonderful faces. All right, so uh, team, I am going to read a question and all you need to do is unmute yourself if you feel like answering this one. Um, all right, so this person says, I saw this video twice before, it's very good. There's talk of collaboration rather than competition. Could you expand more on that? You definitely have heard that tonight. So anybody want to share some of their own experiences or stories related to collaborating over competing? Uh, I can share something. Um, so we get a lot of homework. As you know, our course load is quite challenging. Um, and so a lot of times you'll see students will stay after school to work on homework together in a like our library, which is like a community area. 
And one thing I noticed um, about my classmates was that we, people would be so willing, if you wanted help, you just had to ask someone, they would stop their own homework just to help you on a problem. So it's, it's very like heartwarming <laughs> and nice, and you don't feel like you're competing against each other to like finish your homework first. Everyone's willing to help everyone out, and it's just a really good learning environment. Yeah, I think um, kind of going off what Maya was saying, in the beginning of the year, I was kind of like a little bit reserved when it came to asking for help because I felt like I, I still did kind of have like a feeling of competition with other students because everyone kind of came in knowing how to do different things and having different strengths. But as the year kind of progressed, I like played into the more uh, collaborative environment and like now, for instance, me and a group of my friends stay after school pretty much every day to work on homework until the building closes. And it's just been a really great experience kind of getting to work with lots of different people and seeing different people's points of views and having interesting debates about questions rather than just kind of approaching it as like, I need to get this done. Thank you, Maya and Rachel. Uh, can Matt, can Mans, can people at Mans attend music ensembles at their sending school? I do orchestra in my current school and am planning to apply. So it would be useful to know if Mans offers any music ensembles or if I can attend them at my sending school. So any, I can take this one. Thank you. Um, so I did the advanced course at my sending school, and that was also one of the questions I had. I was like what music and instrument opportunities do they have here at Mass Academy? And one of the great things is that you can actually join the WPI chorus and WPI band or orchestra and play your instrument with them. It is a commitment outside of school and one that you have to stick with for the term, but it's a really great opportunity to meet some college students, meet some college professors willing to teach you. And it's also really fun. You get to learn new music and um, take another kind of semi-course up at WPI. Thank you, Kiara. I will add on to that, that um, Mass Academy students can audition for districts and states. So you can participate in those um, more regional or, or statewide um, ensembles as well. All right, next question. On average, what is the male to female ratio um, that apply and what is the ratio that gets accepted? Uh, I can't answer the question about applying, but um, I believe we have, uh, Mr. Ellis, you'll know better than me. This isn't a student question. This is a, an adult question. Um, is it 27 males and 23 females? I could be off uh, for the junior class. Do you know off the top of your head? Um, it's close to that. If not, it's off by one like that. But it's, you know, we, it's some years it's very close to the 25, 25. And this year there's a couple more males. Um, and also for the historical stuff, I don't think we, we, we can track it, but we have not tracked what the percentage of applicants has been on gender, the total applicants. Thank you so much, Mr. Ellis. What does the class schedule look like? Oh, this is gonna be a good one for the juniors to answer and the seniors too, because your lives are so different this year. Are there studies um, to work with teachers one-on-one -on -one for extra, or opportunities to work with teachers one-on-one -on -one for extra help during the day? Lastly, what is the homework expectation? All right, sit back everybody, this will, this will take a while. I can do this one. So for schedules for juniors, um, we typically, well, for us, we have three sections and one of the sections, so there's one intermediate Spanish, one French as a whole, and then one advanced, uh, advanced Spanish. And the French is divided into intermediate and advanced. And that's the, just the French, French section ends up splitting for STEM and French. But throughout the day, we have blocks for each class and um, each section goes to a different class um, throughout those blocks. If you want to get extra help for a class, um, there's teachers are always there after school, at least for like a couple minutes or half an hour. So there's always time to go up to them. We do have directed studies sometimes, like if there's like a math competition or something um, and you're not participating, you do have a direct directed study in homeroom. And every day or almost every day, there's a homeroom advisory for half an hour 
where there's off task time and on task time. So you start with 15 minutes on task where you have the time to work on anything. And then the 15 minutes off task is time you have to go eat a snack or go on your phone or something. But most students typically tend to stay on task and finish their work during that time. Um, I just to add on to that for the bit about uh, contacting like teachers if you need extra help or you want to talk to them. Um, uh, like like Deeksha said, during homeroom time, there's you can always go up to their classroom and talk to them about any questions you may have. But also all the teachers are really open to like setting up appointments and meetings. They'll always make time to talk to you or meet with you if you really need to. So never hesitate to ask to talk or like meet after school or at a like set time with your teachers. Before we move on to what the senior schedule is like, um, there was also a question about in that in that bigger question about the homework expectation. Does anybody want to answer or address that part of the question? I could take this one. Um, so I think I think um, it's coming to Mass Academy. You really are pushing yourself academically. So with that comes a good amount of homework. Um, I think all of us would say that there, you know, there, it, you have to work hard. I think really that's what it comes down to when you do have a lot of work. Really, it comes down to what works best for you. For me personally, I have found out that that's being able to complete my homework and go to sleep um, not too late means that I have to work with my friends on my math homework and then I get to come home and I get to finish the rest of my homework on my own. Um, there are really, it's, it's whatever you struggle with, whatever you think you need to collaborate on. Um, that's what I would prioritize first, but I think really it's, it fluctuates. Um, there are times when there's a lot of STEM, like right now, um, we have February fair coming up. So right now there's a lot of STEM work. There's other times when it's a lot of math, but then there's also days, um, where we are given, um, less homework or we have time to spend with our friends. So it does fluctuate like any school, I think, um, it's just, you have to work a little bit harder at what you're given. Thank and you. I think, I think yep. adding on to that also, in the beginning of the year, um, the teachers, they kind of like help you get used to the work and acclimated to what you're kind of getting yourself into when you come here. And like, for instance, they'll kind of show you like different ways that you can, like in physics, when you're learning the concepts, you'll learn how to kind of set up the problems in a way that's efficient and effective. And it'll like kind of help you to build off of those skills and develop, like understand what is good homework for that class and like what you need to do to kind of meet those expectations. Thank you, Rachel. How about some seniors? Talk about what your schedule is like and the workload. Um, for seniors, the schedule is super flexible. So um, like, because a lot of us are taking intro classes, there are a ton of those, like for example, uh, it feels like there's a calculus lecture at every time of the day. So you can really just pick your own schedule and go with that. Um, so some people make their schedule so that they only go to school four days a week out of five. A lot of us go to school five days a week and some days we're only on campus for an hour or two. And some people like to stay on campus the whole day and they have a lot of breaks. So. I really like that it's up to us and yeah, it's super flexible. Yeah, I'm kind of adding on to what Katie said. Uh, usually during the day, uh, you, you, you have con complete control over what your schedule looks like. So I personally, in A and B term, I made it so that my classes are kind of spread apart so that I have some breaks in between so that I could not only, you know, talk to my friends and socialize, but also finish all the homeworks I have in between those breaks so that by the time I went home, I didn't have anything else to do and I could just relax and, you know, watch TV or uh, sleep a bit early. So you really have complete control over what your schedule looks like and it all comes down to planning. Seniors, could you talk about the, the kind of like the cycle of the seven week term and in terms of workload, what that looks feels like to all of you? So uh, most colleges run on a semester basis, but WPI runs on quarters. So it feels a lot more rushed. Um, there are midterms and finals. So those weeks get pretty busy. But other than that, it can be, it's definitely a lot less intense than junior year for the most part. But um, 
yeah, it's pretty different for most colleges. Yeah, and jumping on to Katie's point, as I mentioned before, I we all have it um, usually just three classes per term. And again, sounds like sounds like a little bit. Each of these classes, since it's just seven weeks, there's a lot to pack in. I'm currently taking a human biology course and um, learning all about all of human biology in just seven weeks is very rough. And in fact, we're only focusing in on two of the uh, 11 organ systems of the human body because we have such little amount of time. So. But I would agree with Katie that weeks where there, there are midterms and final exams, it does get pretty busy. Thank you. Um, let's see. Uh, so there's a question that asks approximately how many students apply every year. Um, that actually comes up a few times in here. Um, you know, 180 to 200 students is the typical uh, range, but it varies, it fluctuates from year to year in terms of the number of students that apply. Um, what is the student to teacher ratio? Students, why don't you um, kind of touch upon what it feels like or, and I can then of course elaborate if need be. Uh, I can take this one. So generally class sizes uh, are like for each of the sections are between like 16 and 17 people. Um, I believe on the website it's advertised as 13 students per staff member, but it is pretty close to that. Um, there's a lot of, like there's very, in terms of the teacher-student ratio, there's few students to the teacher, so you do get a lot of uh, personalized support. Yeah. Yeah, so there are six, six core academics, uh, so one teacher for each, so there are six teachers, and there are 50 juniors that they teach. The seniors um, are on the WPI campus. So they are taking classes with WPI professors. And as John explained, the class sizes can vary, um, but every faculty member um, is also a, an advisor to some of those seniors. And we have between four and six um, seniors each that we advise. So there are the six teachers, but you also have the school counselor and you have myself and Ms. Thario, Ms. Julie. And uh, so there are, the, when you break it down that way, um, there's a, I would hope that they all feel like there are definitely um, um, choices and, and opportunities to connect with adults if they need to uh, at Mass Academy. What majors do students often pursue in college and how much of a technology focus is there compared to traditional math and science? Um, I'm not too sure about the major question, but I can talk about um, kind of the focus on technology and math versus the different life sciences and chemistry. So that was one of the things um, I was kind of taking into account while choosing to apply here is because I've always been more biology and chemistry focused in terms of science. And I had no exposure to computer science before coming here. But after coming to MAMS, it's true that all 50 students end up taking the computer science course. Everyone takes the same math course in junior year. And I think it's the exposure that really helps um, kind of open like myself up to different types of sciences. But then, then there's also the independent research proce process um, where you can kind of choose what field you want to go into. Like, for example, I know a bunch of students in our years chose biology projects if that's what they're interested in. And then I know when you go up to WPI, you can choose what courses you want to take. And so a lot of seniors end up taking biology courses then. Uh, also kind of adding on to what Kira has already said. So I personally, uh, before coming to Mass Academy, I was a huge biology nerd. You know, I used to love everything about biology. Right. And then I came to Mass Academy and I was introduced to computer science and all the things that came with technology. And I just fell in love with both of these fields. And so now I'm in, uh, applying to college as a computational biology and bioinformatics major. So uh, there's a lot of emphasis on technology and computer science uh, in, in Mass Academy. So no matter what side of the field or what, what areas you're focused on, uh, you'll be exposed to that aspect as well. And then you can make a decision on whether you like it or not, uh, or you want to pursue it in the future, or you can combine it with your existing interests and pursue that in college uh, like I did. So, yeah. 
Thank you all. There are some questions about uh, participating in sports at your sending schools. And uh, is it realistic? Do you have the time to do that? So maybe some of our, senior, our students who are participating in sports and maybe, you know, Karen, I know um, you're the mother of a multi-season athlete. So you can talk about it from the parents' perspective, how manageable it is. So Karen, why don't you start yeah, and we'll hear from students. So my daughter, Rachel, is a senior this year. She participated in field hockey, and she also participated in her high school swim team. In addition to that, she does club swim year round. So there are many days she goes to two practices and she's able to manage it. She just has to make her schedule um, work for her swim and field hockey schedule. Thank you, Karen. Juniors or any seniors that are uh, participating in sports, do you want to talk about what it's how you manage it? Especially, um, there was another question too related to to that about um, participating in other extracurriculars and so like how you make those choices. I can talk a little bit about the sports side. Um, so I play uh, club volleyball. I played for my school volleyball team. I also play club hockey and I also played for my school hockey team this year. And I've always kind of been used to running around from sport to sport. So I kind of like have a lot of experience with time management. And I think that a lot of students who participate, especially in club activities, they also would kind of have that time management skill. But you kind of just have to think about it realistically if you think you can handle like taking on the challenge of the academic rigor up of the curriculum here at Mass Academy and also being able to manage your sports. And I think a lot of it also comes with your ability to communicate um, on both ends with being talking to the teachers if you have a problem with being able to complete an assignment, they're very understanding. And if you just like, if you're missing one thing and you need to like, maybe just like an extra day or a couple extra minutes to finish it up, they'll usually be um, pretty accepting of that. And also being able to communicate with your coaches is very important. Um, most of them, some of them kind of don't really understand like what it's like to be at Mass Academy. So you kind of have to like be able to make it known that you may not be able to show up to every single practice, but it kind of just depends on your school and your coaches and what they'll be okay with you doing. But it's, it's definitely manageable, but um, you just kind of have to know your limits and be prepared to kind of like speak up when, if you're struggling or you need help with something in any kind of form. I just wanna add on to that. Um, deciding to participate in a an activity at your sending school can be like a difficult decision if you are like scared of the academic rigor, but at the same time, if it's something that you really love to do, doing your schoolwork like 24 seven all the time and just focusing on that isn't gonna like, make like you need like to take a break from that and like do something that you love and that'll motivate you to get more work done so that's just something to keep in mind how about uh anybody that is maybe juggling some some uh, extracurriculars at mass academy or at the wpi campus um how do you navigate those Whether it's so robotics? i'm on the robotics team at mass academy and um it's a lot of hours every week, but then again, it's also super flexible. Um, yeah, so usually like in the robotic season, we do like five to eight hours in the lab per week, which might sound like a lot, but you can also come in on weekends and there are a few weekdays as well. So it's super flexible and I encourage you to uh, get to know Mass Academy's robotics team, it's great. And we have a ton of fun. Thank you very much. Um, regarding teacher recommendations, do we need to take recommendations from respective school teachers and upload them in the application or just request through the application and they'd be submitted directly to Mass Academy? Yep, you just re request them through the portal um, and uh, the, the teachers, the recommenders will do the rest. So just put their contact information into the application portal and then you don't have to do anything more there. Um, we have another question. Could you please say more about homework expectations? So maybe just touch upon that one more time. That seems to be a lingering question. 
Okay, well, I feel like homework is this thing that everyone kind of thinks about when they think about Mass Academy. But like, if you have a big part of it is just being able to manage your time, like keeping a planner. And if you are struggling with that, the teachers are always willing to help you if you just go and ask them. And if you start like breaking up like big projects and assignments into chunks really helps you because you come to a point where you know exactly what you're doing and you know how much to do every day. And it is possible, it is possible to like finish your homework at a decent time and go to sleep at a decent time. Like it's really not like that. You just have to, like Saya said, you just have to prioritize what you want to get done first, like the things you struggle with more and then what you think you can do later in the day when you get more tired. And a lot of the homework is basically based, oh my, a lot of the homework is basically based off of how much effort you put into doing it and not like the correct answer. Um, adding on to what Tixia said, I think that in terms of for myself, like at my sending school, like I would procrastinate like a lot, but um, just, I know that people like hear it a lot, but I say like, just try to get your work done like as soon as like you can, don't like put it off to last minute. And for like a lot of big projects, like like your STEM project, you definitely cannot like save that at work till like last minute or anything. And I know like at Mass Academy, a lot of kids like they do work like during lunch and stuff, but like you don't have to do that. You should like take like some time off, you eat your food and then like you need to like power yourself up so that you can do it after school, work with your friends again, like I already been said before. Um, just to add on to what both Deeksha and Treya said, they kind of mentioned this, but one thing about Mass Academy being a project-based school is that we do have a lot of long-term projects kind of going on. Um, and then we also get short-term assignments um, on a daily basis. So it's really just about finding an effective way to balance both, keep chipping away at the long-term projects while still effectively putting in the hard work like Deeksha said, and getting the putting the effort into your short term assignments as well as your long term assignments, and there is an adjustment period, especially in a term. But I think everyone, I would say everyone by now, develops their own routine and gets used to it. And it's definitely very manageable if you reach out if you're struggling and learn to kind of chip away at everything. Thank you all very much. How do you suggest preparing for certain classes, for example, physics, over the summer to get yourself ready for the fast paced learning environment? Uh, I think oh, oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yes, I'll take it. Uh, I don't really think that it's necessary to try and prepare over the summer. I think you should enjoy your summer. Um, most students, I think Mass and Mr. Ella said, most students come in without having taken a physics class before. And you know, you will be able to keep up as long as you collaborate and work with others. And I think it's the same for a lot of other classes. Um, so I think you don't really have to do much preparation beforehand. You can just come in and start learning. Yeah, Thank to you. add on to what uh, Karthik, sorry, what Karthik was saying, um, I don't think you need to prepare too much for physics. You can keep up. Uh, with just the course that you were given in school. Um, as for other summer work though, you do start working on your STEM project a little over the summer. Uh, Dr. C will be helping like guide you on what to do. So I think that was pretty much the only, um, that and like some summer reading or our humanity class was about the only summer work we had to do. Um, just to add on to what Maya said about STEM, the only really, the work you have to do for STEM over um, the summer is just start brainstorming ideas um, and interests uh, of interest that you would like you'd maybe consider pursuing in your STEM project or maybe reaching out to a lab if that's something you want to consider. So my advice is that um, just start thinking about that as soon as possible, because the sooner you start like uh, kind of fine tuning your ideas or fine tuning your interests, the easier it is like the process of like doing some research and then fine tuning like to your actual project will become easier. So that's my only advice for like over the summer work in regards to class classes. Fantastic, thank you so much. Is there flexibility in course offerings for juniors? What if I've already taken upper level computer science and math classes? 
Uh, I can take this one. So a lot of the courses at MAMS have separate, like separate tracks for some people who have a necessary background. So if you've taken uh, AP computer science, then there's like an advanced computer science track where you can work on an independent project. Um, if you take in like Calc BC, then there's a program where you can uh, take uh, math classes over at WPI uh, starting in your junior year. And I believe those are the those are the main ones. But if you have background in some of the subjects, then you can uh, continue going forward. Um, in physics, it's a little bit different. So everyone comes in with a different uh, experience in physics. A lot of people don't have any physics. Um, I was one of those who had no classes in physics before, and um, I did the physics with calculus track. Um, a lot of people did just the regular physics. Um, some people did with calculus and with all kinds of backgrounds. So the physics one is really open to anyone and it's flexible to whatever kind of background you have. Thank you very much. How does Mass Academy prepare students for emerging technological trends with their curriculum? Um, in terms of like emerging technical, technological trends, I think a lot of this can be, uh, you learn a lot about this stuff when you do your STEM project. Typically your STEM project topic is something that um, you're very interested in. And then you do a lot of research about it and you learn about um, very recent research that's going on in that field. So that could help you uh, help prepare you for like emerging trends in that field that you're interested in. Kind of just I would, I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, yeah, um, just to add on to what Maya said, like a quick thing with the STEM project, um, there are so many resources available to you as a junior, so you really can like dip your toe in a bunch of different fields. And I would also say that in addition to the STEM one project, we also do a STEM two project and an apps for good project. Um, so just this focus on project based learning really helps you prepare. Uh, for emerging technological trends, because in addition to learning the curriculum, you also get to investigate what you're interested in and do your own research and make your own conclusions and present that. And I, so I think that really helps prepare you uh, for what's going on. In addition to STEM over junior and senior year, you're actually exposed to some, I'd say computer, like I, I should say upper level uh, programs like Mathematica and uh, MATLAB. These are two programs that, you know, um, might help out in your in any future careers you might uh, pursue. If you want to learn about more programs that uh, you could possibly encounter senior, not saying that you could encounter all of these, but that you might encounter, you can check out uh, WPI Hub um, and go to their, um, oh, their, their software library catalog. Thank you. Please name the advantages that Mass Academy offers in terms of applying to colleges and universities versus students from other public schools. So a bunch of you have done your college applications and you're waiting for those acceptance letters. So what is it about your, as you put your application together, what do you think really made you stand out? Definitely all the project opportunities that Mass Academy uh, put us at a huge advantage for college applications. Um, there's also opportunity to do research at WPI. There's a lot of lab experience in senior year. And overall, uh, we just have so many projects and so many group work as well, which colleges look for. I also want to point out, there are a few Instagram accounts with um, places and majors that past Mass Academy students have go there have gone there. So I encourage you to check those out if you're interested uh, in what kinds of places people have gone. Don't forget about your independent senior projects, which are fascinating, not tying John. I mean, we could, seniors, share what some of your independent projects are on this, this year. Uh, mine is learning German, uh, which was a very new experience because I had never learned a language uh, independently before.
Come on, seniors. I'm making an iOS app to track digestive health. I'm trying to uh, look at neurological circuits and model them in uh, comp in uh, computer for my assist. Some of my ad advisees are um, learning archery. Uh, one is learning how to cook Gujarati and uh, put writing a cookbook and has as a mentor a uh, cookbook author. So uh, there are really interesting opportunities for students to really do something unique and they can put that on their resume, they can put that on their college application. And don't forget about the 50 hours of community service per year. You heard about what some of those opportunities are that students take advantage of and, and the, the work that they do. And it's, it really is truly impressive. Um, how far away do most students live from WPI? I can say this one. Um, I think it's like a varied range. I personally live about 40 minutes and with traffic, sometimes it gets worse, but um, it's definitely still very manageable. You just gotta wake up early in the morning. Um, and usually that means you gotta go to sleep a little bit earlier. Uh, but people come from all over Massachusetts. And I remember there was actually uh, a Google sheet with where people, the towns that people came from and it was really spread uh, all throughout. I know generally there's a good amount of people from Shrewsbury, but uh, yeah. And I'd just like to mention, I know this was mentioned in one of the QAs that was answered um, in written text. You, the, carpooling is a very viable option. A lot of students take advantage of this. I personally do carpooling um, with another friend of mine and we've been doing this since junior year. So carpooling is definitely um, effective. Even if um, right now you don't, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna make new friends when you, if you um, attend Mass Academy and um, if you meet someone that is close to you, you might be able to arrange a carpooling schedule. Thank you for, for pointing that out, John. For people who have taken AP Calculus beforehand from their sending school, what content do they learn in junior year at Mass Academy in math? So it kind of depends. Um, so you might go on to take math classes at WPI. Calc BC, by the way, equivalents to Calc 1 and 2. So you would probably start with Calc 3 and 4. Um, a lot of people also just stay in the Mass Academy math class. And while the Mass Academy math class does prepare you for Calc, meaning there's some pre-Calc, some trig, some geometry, some algebra, all of that, it's really focused more on project-based um, learning. So we do like a few math modeling competitions and math modeling projects. Um, and solving a lot of unique problems, some of them from AMC and AIM. So there's a good mix of everything. Yeah, so kind of building off what Katie said, um, one of the big things a lot of times friends would ask, like, what math class um, are you taking at Mass Academy? And I didn't have an answer for them aside from just math, because really the math that you take at Mass Academy is so like different and its approach to problem solving is kind of thinking outside the box. So even kids who've taken like AP Calc or have come from different math classes, the math you end up taking at Mass Academy really is like a different kind of math that encourages you to think outside of the box. Um, so I hope that kind of answers your question. Thank you, Shay. What's the starting date of the school year? It's mid-August. I think this year uh, it was August 18th. I do remember it, it's early. So going back to that question about what to prepare over the summer in, in terms of um, being ready for uh, a junior year at Mass Academy, um, you know, spend some time you know, enjoying that summer because it's a short summer. Uh, most sending schools that, that you're ending at the end of June, 
uh, and starting in very late August, maybe even early September, and we're bringing you back a couple of weeks earlier than that, for sure. How is student instruction managed with all of the different paths to take? Um, I think it comes down to how individualized the classes are with the different paths. The teachers um, do talk to you one-on-one -on -one a lot and will give you separate instructions for your specific track. So there, it, the classes definitely are individualized to what path you want to take. Thank you. This one's for the parents. Um, do students get to experience a balanced life? Understanding the emphasis on academic rigor, do you find that student social emotional well being is maintained and that they are able to thrive socially? So I will say uh, I will say uh, depends if the child is um, very social, they will definitely make time somehow to uh, meet their friends. And in my experience, I will say since uh, they had been through a uh, COVID period, uh, when uh, they were in 11th grade, they could not meet much. But still, I know these kids, they have Discord and they do ch chat a lot and uh, uh, do a lot of uh, mischiefs over there. So I get to hear some of the funny uh, stories from Davik. So I will say these kids, uh, they find a way to uh, entertain themselves. And uh, another thing that I understand that I have noticed uh, that he has made a lot of very good friends after coming to MAMS. And I believe they will cherish this friendship even if they go to a different colleges. And uh, I believe uh, what I have noticed that um, these kids are very, very collaborative and the way they help each other, in, even in the events when um, um, the kids, they will wait for each other, the, they will uh, work together. So it's, 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 it's a different experience altogether. There is no competition. They are just having fun. And 12th grade, I believe me, it will be a lot of fun. After uh, passing 11th grade, it's a lot of relief, I will say that. Uh, and it's a good treat, I will say, because um, they work a lot. And they all have uh, become a self learner. That's the best part. They know how to take the risk and they know how to come out of it, even after getting so much of, uh, I was a hindrance in between. And um, sometimes they even reach out to their friends to solve those problems. So uh, it's, it's, it's a good social life. I will not say that um, um, they will miss anything at all. And I also agree that they definitely have time to socialize. It's also about the time management and making that a priority too. If you, you know, put it into your schedule, you'll have time to be able to socialize with your friends. Thank you. When are decisions to attending MAMS due after finding out acceptance in May? Um, we will, um, you'll, what will happen, and there's another question here, what are the acceptance requirements? Is it based off your sending school academics GPA? So there are a lot of questions now about the application process. So decisions will come out in May. We do send, we'll send you, once those decisions come out, we'll send you um, uh, instructions on how to either accept the seat or decline the seat. Um, with your, your um, some additional information for you. And we'll give you uh, a deadline for doing that. And then later in May, we have that orientation as well. Um, and so all of that kind of happens in May. And I don't know, team, this is my first year doing this. So is um, the, the decision point, the, the timeline for the um, accepted students to d decide if they're coming, what is that to commit? I'll, I'll answer that. It's, um... I can't remember exactly, but I know that it's not more than two weeks. 
So it might even be 10 days to 14 days. It's a short turnaround. Um, so as you're applying, start considering if you got an acceptance letter, what would you answer as? Um, because we're trying to make sure that we give that opportunity to other seats if people don't have it. So let's call it 10 to 14 days, but it might be 10 days. Yeah. And that, that's, you know, as, as Mr. Ellis explained, you know, it really is about making sure that we, um, uh, if, if a seat is declined, that we have time to offer it to another student. Um, these are, you know, 50 important seats and we want to make sure we fill all of them um, for this great program since so many people are, are interested. Um, the acceptance requirements, I mean, I think you've heard from us tonight what, our, what we're um, all about, what we're looking for in terms of a student, and I would encourage you to just look at our website to learn more. Um, I, I, we have, if you look at our student handbook, you'll see that we have um, our beliefs about learning, our core values, our habits of mind, and I think you'll learn a lot there about what we deem as important, so I encourage you to take a look at that in the student handbook that's on the student resources page of our website. Um, what resources such as Chromebooks, laptops, textbooks, and softwares are provided to the students? Um, as for like laptops and Chromebooks, most students bring their own, although I think the school does have computers available in like the computer science room um, for use on like projects yeah, according to how you need them. Uh, we're also given calculators, the TI and Fire. Uh, we do pay for them, but I think they're at a pretty good discount, if, if I am correct. Um, as for software, we do get Mathematica, uh, as mentioned before. Um, the junior class currently has access to 3D Experience, which is a CAD software online. Um, and I believe, we do have access to things like 3D printing machines as well. Yeah, there's a very good variety of resources available to us. Uh, I also want to add that we also have access to uh, Microsoft Office and pretty much everything that WPI students have access to. Um, so all the technologies and software that they have, uh, Mass Academy students can also use uh, on their uh, laptops. And it also goes all the way to using WPI servers and some of their machines. So. It extends uh, all the way as well, if you're interested in that. Thank you. I am in marching band and our band camp typically takes place at the middle um, or end of August. How would that be affected with the school year at MAMS? Uh, when you submit your, um, it, if you're accepted, when you submit your commitment, um, you can notify us. There's a place to notify us about any conflicts, um, whether it's, um, uh, you know, whatever they happen to be. So you can include that in your information to us um, as part of your um, acceptance uh, confirmation. Where do students coming from outside of the Worcester area usually end up living? Um, and I think that means while they're attending Mass Academy. I don't think that means after graduation. I think they're referring to um, when they uh, are attending Mass Academy. And most people, to my knowledge, most um, students do commute from their homes. Um, I do know that there have been occasions where um, there's been an apartment that, uh, you know, the family uh, rents an apartment more locally. But for the most part, uh, students do live at home and commute to school um, every day. This is not a residential program, just to make that clear. There's, there's no, um, we don't have dorms. Um, and uh, so this is a commuter program. It's a, a day school only. In what ways um, does the in what ways does the school counselor help junior and senior years, such as looking for college application process, scholarships, and writing essays? Usually, how many times does a student get a chance to meet with the counselor? I think that's a question for the seniors. Yeah. So in junior year. Um, you can meet with Mrs. Post, our guidance counselor, if you want. And in senior year, uh, we usually meet with her every one to two weeks. So it's up to you. And you can ask her to read essays to help with, the, with applying to colleges, with picking colleges, anything like that. She's a great resource.
All right, that's the end of the questions. We just, the, there, we, we finished them all. This is wonderful. I want to thank you all so much for joining us tonight and thank you to our faculty, to the students and to the parents for being here with us tonight as well. If you haven't started an application yet, feel free to check out our website again, go to the admissions page and click apply and you can begin that application there and see what it looks like. Um, and otherwise, thank you all very much. Stay warm. Good luck with this storm this weekend and uh, have a good evening. <laughs>